Well, her brains say rattle and her bones say shake. Well, she's an angel from the end of her lake. Her brains say rattle and her bones say shake. Well, she's an angel from the end of her lake. Well, don't dance with her and we don't dance with her shake. Well, she's an angel from the end of her lake. Oh, I said dance. Oh, yes, my name's Eddie Winters. You're listening to the Rock and Roll Coup d'etat, baby. And we've got a fantastic legend on the phone, a fantastic drummer, all the way from New Jersey, Vinny Mad Dog Lopez. Welcome to the program, Vinny. Wow. Eddie, how are you doing out there on the other coast? Baby, I'm doing great. We are excited to have you on the program. Yeah, it's a real honor. It is an absolute honor and a thrill. It is. Well, thank you. Glad to have you. We've been, by the way, we've been going, we've been listening to your drumming all morning. And it is, Uh-oh. <laughs> it is sensational. And, uh, yeah, I'm all hyperactive. Now. We, we, we <laughs> have been hopped up on your drum juices. <laughs> exactly. And it is, it is uh, quite an honor. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us oh, today. Oh, it's my pleasure there, Eddie. My pleasure. By the way, congratulations on being a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's, uh, it's, for me, it's quite incredible. You know, I've been doing this now for 50 years, and oh my, went through a whole bunch of bands. And uh, when they when they called me up and said I'm in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I almost died right on the spot. I I can only imagine. <laughs> I, that would have been a shame. Did they make, <laughs> they make sure? Yeah, well, yeah it would have been. Cause I would have <laughs> been uh, pushing up daisies right now. You uh, wouldn't have been talking to me. I ho- I hope Why you. Why did it take so long? That's the question. But that you know, that's a that what? is a good question. What's what, that? Why did it take so long to, to get the E Street Band into well, the Rock and Roll Hall Well, I would of fame? say, you know, I, I really don't know the true answer, but I would just say that Bruce got in, and uh, there's certain criteria they have, and uh, at some point, E Street Band met the criteria, you know, the 25 years right. thing, because, you know, hmm. done more recordings than just with Bruce, you know, so... There's things there that happened, and and just thank God that I'm included in it, you know. Because I'm, I'm the founding member myself and Danny Federici, so it that, was cool that uh, we were there. And that's you know we were, we were talking about that right before we had you on about how I mean it's you you literally were instrumental in in forming the group and 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 reached out to Bruce to get him to join. Uh, what, 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 you know, what, what, what was the band like before you guys were just, you'd known each other for a little while. You, you went to school with Gary Talent and you'd known Danny and all these guys from around played in groups with him. Uh, what was the, what was the deciding factor to get to Bruce in the band at that moment? Well, what happened with Danny and I worked with a guy and Gary, too, at the end of this band, we were in a band called the Downtown Tangiers Rock and Rhythm and Blues Band with Billy Chinnick. Okay, and he's a New Jersey guy that was writing songs before Bruce. Actually, before we met Bruce, we were touring with Bill in this band. And eventually the band broke up, and Danny and I still wanted to play together, you know. And uh, we went around looking for guitar players and bass players. And. I came up with Bruce, and uh, when we went to see him at the Upstage Club, he was playing with little Vinny Roslin, who is also gone now. Um, and we saw them at the Upstage. We said, hey, let's jam. So the four of us jammed, and we made a band called Steel Mill, and uh, the rest is history. And we played in San Francisco, Steel Mill. We played at the Matrix. We played at the Family Dog. You know, we it's played in some few places out there. Very Co- we played at Marin College for lunchtime one time. Steel Mill. I'm <laughs> there's, you, there's a very, there's two very legendary bootlegs uh, recordings from 1969, 1970 of Steel Mill live at the Matrix. Uh, just that's right. And they are they are outstanding uh, sounding recordings. And, and we 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 played a little bit of that earlier on the program. And I remarked just how. You know, people people think of the Springsteen sound uh, as as being uh, as such, but Steel Mill it was a lot more uh, uh, heavy, a lot of a lot of thunder, a lot of stacks oh, yeah. of guitars, and uh, well, I mean, was that the sound you guys you you initially thought of? Like, we're gonna get this band together, we're gonna be a hard rocking band. 
that's that's how we did it. And the, like the first question when I met Bruce was, "Hey, you, do you write any songs?" You know, like nowadays, how stupid does that sound? You know, <laughs> does he write any songs? He writes thousands of songs, and he did in those days. But we, he would come in. We said, "Come on, let's do originals." He'd come in, and we made them what they were, and we were a very rock and roll band. But we also did country western. We did jazz. We we did stuff, mainly jazz. When we made when we messed stuff up, you know, we called it jazz. Of course, so. <laughs> I do the same thing. When I when I mess up on radio, I become jazz. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But you know, and then uh, you know, because Bruce wasn't really working in a band. He, he had his band Earth, but they weren't making any money. And Danny and I came from, we were uh, on the road with Chinook. We were at least making, you know, weekly weekly money and we could live. And when that, uh, the DTTD, RR, and BV broke up, we uh, we needed to keep working. And when we found Bruce, it was, it was perfect. And then uh, we all went to see my friend Tinker, Carl West, who is, who is my good buddy. Now he's from the West Coast, and uh, I met him back in 67 when he came here, and he was looking to do something with an original band, and there were none at the Jersey Shore. Everybody was just, it was 100 clubs to play, and everybody's doing copy music, you right. know? And, uh, and here we come doing the original stuff, and Tinker took us under his wing and, and built the PA. We had the truck. We went to California in Tinker's truck. You know, in 1969, Christmas time, 1969, and uh, it was just the start of something that just kept on going. But Bruce needed to make some money too, as we all did. Sure, you know, and that's why we got together. So, what what led to the the end of Steel Mill? Well, the end of Steel Mill, uh, I think Bruce wanted Bruce heard Van Morrison, <laughs> <laughs> or and he went to see a show. And Van Morrison had horns and girl singers and and such. So Bruce says, I want to go in that direction. So Bruce started writing songs more in an R&B style. Right. And uh, it became the Bruce Springsteen Band, which eventually flopped. (laughs) And then he signed a contract with uh, CBS, and they didn't want the band. They wanted him, and they were going to use their own music. But Bruce insisted he bring his band, and that was us with him and uh, that five piece core band which was uh, Bruce, Gary Talent, Danny Federici, Clarence Clemens and myself. We we went on and uh, it, it it was cool playing in that band. I Very can cool. I, I can imagine it, it it's surprising too because as the story goes, you know, Bruce was signed as a solo artist uh, a la Bob Dylan, Van Morrison kind of sound, and then they brought the band in. I mean, of course, you've got these uh, great acoustic songs like The Angel and, and things yeah. of that nature. And then, of course, you've got this 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 band on top of it. And what I noticed, uh, and as time is told, is that that, that group, it, it, that core group, it just it had a, a somewhat of like this R&B uh, a, a show kind of feel to it and elements of it. And it had this very... Um, I, I James Brown review kind of feel, and uh, well, Bruce was uh, hard not to look at in them days. Oh yes, you know. <laughs> oh no, he commanded when you were on that stage. You know, the audience was in his hands, and uh, and uh, he took care of that. You know, I just heard a like an interview with David Bowie because uh, we opened a show for this guy Biff Rose at Max's Kansas City in New York City in those days. And David Bowie came to see Biff Rose. So now he came for the whole show. So Bruce comes out by himself, which we always did. And Bruce, he goes, I'm going to see another singer, songwriter guy. I think he's Bob Dylan. This is David Bowie talking. And he goes, and then the band came out. And he says, they were the best rock and roll band I ever heard. When he said that, I almost died. (laughs) I would have That's pretty amazing. You know what I mean? And that's David Bowie. Yeah, of course. And he really enjoyed sitting and listening to that core band. And that's so cool in my book. Yes. You know, was, I uh, love that. This was the mid-70s when Masters this, Kansas was still open, right? This was, what, 1970, what, two, three? 73. Wow. You know, yeah, 73. I mean, that, that core group, I mean, that, the first, that first uh, records tour, it was just the five of you guys. And, yeah. and 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 the, the the sound 
of just the five of you guys, such a enormous, enormous sound. And guitar, uh, Bruce on guitar, no, no rhythm, you know, just uh, Danny on the organ, and you're drumming. Uh, how, by the way, how, how would you describe? I, I know you probably hate this question, but you, like your drumming has got a distinct sound. It's, it's, it's got a, it, it's. You lock it. You lock it in when you gotta lock it in, and it's and it's it's wild and crazy when it needs to be wild and crazy. How how did you, as a kid growing up listening to this music, how did you define your sound? How did you land into you, the Vinny Lopez sound? Well, a good friend of mine who is also gone now, Buzzy Lubinsky. I met him when I was 14 years old, and he was playing drums along with records. I loved the way it sounded, and he made the record sound live. Right. Teenage dances, and I got a job with him. And his father owned several records, which was James Cleveland, big uh, gospel uh, record company in Newark, New Jersey. So Buzzy would get these free tickets to these shows. For instance, a Murray Decay show. We went to the Murray, a Murray Decay show once, and we were backstage on the bill, okay, is uh, Wilson Pickett. Wow. Wow. Uh, Joe Tex. Cream. Who? Wow. Are on this show. This is a crazy show. And I got to stand backstage and watch Ginger Baker, and I got to watch um, uh, Keith Moon, and I just stood there and I went, God. I want to do that. Yes. So, in my mind and my body, that's what I did. <laughs> when I played the drums, I just tried to emulate what I saw and heard from those guys. And it's, yes. I mean, the wildest drummers of the time. I mean, it's, yeah, no, yeah. they were. And, and, yeah. and one of my other favorite drummers is Mitch Mitchell. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Legendary. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like, it's just, it's a combo deal, you know, and I... I do all kinds of music now. I play all kinds of things, and it's because of those guys. Yeah, you know, I I, I almost wanted to say it's like you were the, the, the at that time like the Keith Moon of of Asbury Park. You were just just no new when to to get loud and get crazy, and then and then bring it all back. It, it just that's right. Because you had to come back <laughs> that, to that one. <laughs> exactly, you know? that's your you job. Had to come back there. Yeah. So let me. And I made that happen. Let me ask you a question. Before, when you were in Steel Mill, before the the Bruce Springsteen uh, E Street Band formed, and, and and you, when you were, when did you become the Mad Dog? When when was when was Mad Dog added to the name? <laughs> All right, I'll make this story quick. <laughs> Don't worry. We had a band after Steel Mill broke up. Okay, Steel Mill is no more, but there was like an interim time there. We had a band that forms called Dr. Zoom and the Sonic Boom. One of the greatest okay. band names ever. Great and band name. everybody we knew was in that band. <laughs> everybody. So, but we all had to have nicknames. Okay, so Bruce, he was Dr. Zoom. <laughs> Gary Talent, he was the Funky Chicken. <laughs> John Lyon became Southside Johnny. You know, Steve Van Zant was Miami Steve Van Miami's, Zant. Right. They called me Mad Man. Okay. So, now years go by, now we did the first record. And if you look on the credits on the first record, I'm not Mad Dog, I'm Loper. Right. I'm Vincent Loper Lopez, because if, if Bruce walked in right now, he'd go, hey, Lope, what are you doing? Because my name's Lopez. Right. He calls me Lope, he calls me Loper. So, now um, we're doing the second album. We're playing... Because while we were doing the second album, we're out on tour, too. And we'd come back, and then we'd go in the studio. But now we're out in L.A., and we're playing at the, uh, I think it was the Whiskey A Go-Go. It was. I think it was the Whiskey. And uh, we were opening the show for this hoot night or something that they had. And Clive Davis was there. And he ran CBS at that time. And after the show was over, he comes up to me, and uh, all my clothes were stolen. So I had this bowler hat that I got at the Salvation Army. I had this uh, jockey silks on and my baseball pants that I had. Great look. And he goes, God, yeah. you, you guys look like a circus. He goes, he goes what, you had nicknames in one band, didn't you? And I said, yeah. He goes, what was your nickname? I said, well, it was Mad Man. He goes, no, no, no. Now it's Mad Dog. 
Is that right? And, and I went, oh, boy. And then about three weeks later, Bruce come up to me and goes, yeah, yeah, man, you're a bad dog now. That- you're a bad dog. <laughs> I said, geez, thanks, you know. <laughs> You know, when you're my age and you're a mad dog, people test you. So I learned karate and learned how to <laughs> run. How to defend run. yourself. Pick up the martial arts. Forte, you know? that is... <laughs> Come and get me, but I'm going to run. You know? so <laughs> that is great. The mad dog. I mean, you and you've been mad dog ever since. Is that right? I've been I've... mad dog ever since. It's, it's just... Uh, that's it. I walk in and people go, "Hey, the dog's here!" Hey, hey. well, you know. That is. So, that is I mean, and, I mean, and you I must. You've probably. Got, I mean, you've probably got a, thousands, thousands of nicknames under under your belt, between Lopa uh, and Lopa. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know what Mad Dog spelled backwards is, right? Oh boy. God damn. Oh, there it is. There it is. I had to look, I had to look at the co-host. God damn. But that, you know, but that. that's it. You know, and uh, we all had to have nicknames, and that's just the way it was, you know. And, and uh, in those days, it, it stuck. So it was. It's a, it's a lot of fun right now. And right now, I'm in a band. My friend Paul Whistler, uh, he he's back in town. So it's just me and him. I play my snare drum with brushes but we're called dog whistle oh is that right dog <laughs> so whistle d-a-w-g though d-a-w-g whistle and only cool people can hear us <laughs> i like that that's it's, great uh, and, and, and Benny, you 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 play with uh these guys currently and uh are, are uh, in in the dog whistle and you also do uh you've got a couple other groups that you you play around town in, in around the the jersey Area, I guess, with the steel mill retro, is that is that an active actively? Uh... We, when we can, we do. Yes, the guys in steel mill retro are very. Um, they love it. That's why they do it. They love the music. They all know the music. So, if we don't play for three months, so what? We got a gig now. Okay, we get together and we learn the song's over again. We right. just play them then. And you, you know? do... And, and, and that's good. I also play uh, with this tribute band here called the B Street Band. Right. And there's, yeah, there's videos online of those. And that that's... You yeah, do, you do that, the... Run- you know, that's a lot of fun. And, uh, and uh, I'm basically in the bullpen. I'm not really in a band now. And I don't really want to be because it's just... I really enjoy it. Like this weekend, I didn't have a gig. So Dawn and I, my girlfriend Dawn and I, got to do stuff. There, yes. You know, like, we go look at the, you know, we go to the park and walk around. You know, we we go sculptures we were looking at yesterday. You know, we do all kinds of good stuff that we never got to do. You know, because I say to her when I was in the band, it's hey, come on with me Friday night. Yeah, but I got to play, so you got to sit here. You right, know, that's right. Fun. I'll see you after you the know. show. All right. Yeah, I'll see you after the show, honey. You know, no, that don't fly, you know. So, no, she's, she's saying it does fly, but it don't, you know. <laughs> so now we have fun. Yeah, so now you get, you, get to, you get to live like a human and get to do things that, and not have to hang out in, 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 in weird weird venues and bars and whatnot. Right. I like I'm, it. I'm, I'm totally sick of playing in gin mills, you know, oh, for, for club owners that really don't care about right. it. You know, I, I mean, really, it's it's like... It's it's a relief what I do now. Actually, I'm going to be out in L.A. I think I told you. Yeah, the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame golf thing. That's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to get out there. That, that's exciting. You know, it's and I didn't know this until a, a, a little while back. But you you have a history with 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 golf. Uh, oh yeah. With with doing a professional caddying on the side. That's right. I I was in the U.S. Open in San Francisco at Olympic in 2012. That is, that is, how did you get into the golfing? Well, that goes back to 1967. Is is that right? Uh, All the way? uh, Yeah, in Monmouth College I was and a, there's a guy sitting next to me in music appreciation class and his name was Joe Lanzetta and his father was a pro golfer and uh joey we used to go to the golf course and joey showed me how to hit a golf ball and i started playing golf way back then i didn't start caddying until years later uh in the 80s actually but i've been caddying for the guy that i caddy for mark mccormick is his name he's a he's a club pro here in new jersey at a place called suburban and i've been caddying for him for almost 30 years oh my gosh wow 
That is, that's and right. every one of those years, we tried to get in the U.S. Open. And we there was like six or eight times where we missed by one stroke oh being in gosh. the Open. Oh. And finally in 2012, we were, the low, we, we were one of the only four club pros that made it in to the Open that year. And it was quite exciting being that, out there. I can imagine. I mean, that's... I mean, just to be around, you know, the whole the whole environment and uh, all those pros competing. I mean, is it? Oh yeah. It's it, what is it? How is that? It, it, I mean, different from rock and roll, obviously, but going into a professional competition like that uh, where the stakes are high was was there a little bit of um, I don't know a little uh, a little bit of nervousness going into that, or you just you well, play it cool, Mark. Of, of course, it, yeah, you know, I mean, here, like, for instance, I'll give you a for instance about what it was like to be there. The Tuesday morning practice round, okay, we we are playing with Phil Mickelson. Right. Because my guy's a left hand, lefty, Phil's a lefty. We get to the, you know, and the guy that teed off in front of us and the foursome in front of us was Tiger Woods. Jeez. And on the... Of course, at that time, on the sidelines, there's tens of thousands of people. Yeah. So right then, you get a kind of a dose what the U.S. Open is all. Oh, yes. The pressure is on. the people. And if if you're nervous, forget about it because you just play golf. Yes. You got to just play golf. And my guy did, but he kind of hurt himself a little bit, and it took us out. But we were low round um, in the second round of that. for a long time, we had the little round going. We were going to make the cut, and we got we got we got a bad double in one hole and took us out of the situation. But nevertheless, it was a great experience. Oh, of course, for Mark. You know, now Mark, we're, he's a senior now, so we're going to be doing more things on the senior thing. As as and the uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, the the golf tournament you're coming out west for. That's just a uh, just a, a a more of like a celebrity. Uh, just an event where you're just going to be playing and, 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 and... It's a celebrity pro-am. Yes. You know, I'll be, like, for instance, myself, I'll be paired up with four other golfers. And, then, and I'm on their team, you know, so... And, and they're getting the mad dog. I love it. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're getting the mad dog. I didn't tell them how bad I stink at golf. <laughs> <laughs> but you can give them... You can tell them what club yet. to use. <laughs> Hey, you're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Forget about it. <laughs> that is, that's all right. There's, you know, there there is a lot of uh, you know Rock and Roll uh, Hall of Famers and and also uh, other you know Rock and Roll people who who do play golf take golf very oh, seriously. And a it's, lot. I know. A it's, lot. It's, like it's, um, in this tournament, I can give you a few names that are going to be there. Like Cheech and Chong is going to be there. Stephen Stills is going to be there. Um, Ray Romano is going to be there. But he's you know, good it's going to be, you know, one of those. Yes. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know, that's, it, I can't wait. You know, it's an in and out. I got to go there on Sunday, play Monday and come home on Tuesday because I got stuff I got to do, too. Of course. But uh, I'm going to just enjoy it so much. One thing I'm going to do is because they're I got to have my own car when I'm out there and we're staying in Santa Monica. So I'm going to take that drive up the coast. Oh, yes. To, you know, uh, up to, uh, y- you know, Malibu. Oh, uh, yes. I've, That's all I want to do. Take That's the, all I'm thinking get about. Get a convertible if you can. Coast. Get a convertible. <laughs> and see if they rent Miatas. If you get a Miata, just take that thing straight up to Malibu. Gorgeous time. Yes. I, I, I don't yeah, blame gonna, you at all. <laughs> I'll probably get a you know an Etzel or something. Of course, they they they, <laughs> they L A they do rent those. <laughs> I bet they do. I know. Oh my god! So you know, let's real quick. I wanted to jump back in time real quick and 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 uh, sure and 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 talk a little bit about the uh, your experiences uh, doing the the road gigs, doing the records that you were on, the the famous records, and also the the famous recordings that never made the albums. And, uh, right. I mean, you, there's a lot of that. There, there is a huge amount of that. And, uh, and I gotta say, I mean, it, it is, you know, you've had these friendships with Bruce and, and of course, uh, you know, Danny and Clarence, who are not with us any longer and, and Gary and, uh, you know, being young kids going in there, seeing your friend Bruce get signed to CBS Columbia 
and uh, you, you're getting the opportunity to go into a studio knowing that your recording is going to end up going on this record. At that moment in time, you, you must have been, uh, you know, I guess, I guess just waiting to have that kind of opportunity. What, what was your, your kind of mindset as this stuff was building and you're going in and doing these more and more bigger, bigger shows uh, and recordings? That's what we all lived for. You know, from day one, we heard a, a quote that John Lennon said once about the Beatles. He goes, where do you guys expect to go? And John Lennon said, well, we're going to go to the top, to the very top. And we all heard that. Mm -hmm. And we said, you know what? That's what we want to do. All right. So when we go into the studio, and, like, for me, like, the very first, the first record we did, the Greetings album, that was basically an acoustic album. Right. We learned it in a few days, went in and recorded, and a week later it was out. You know, there was not a lot of, uh, we're going to do this again. Right. It was, it was all basically one-take tracks, and then they had the things, you know. Uh, the second album took a little longer. But still, I wish it took even a little longer, just because there's certain little things on there that could have been, you know. There's all you, you're, if you're an artist, there's always something that's going to be better, you know. Is, you look at your painting and is, is, is oh this... no, this needs to be. And then you get to a point where if you keep adding shit, it ain't no good. Excuse my language. No problem. But but uh, you know, we just all wanted to make the best. And when here's another thing about us. We were 100% behind what Bruce was wanted, you know? And to this day, everybody is 100% behind what Bruce wants to do. Uh, just e even at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing, you know? Right. Everything. We made sure that it was, I made sure it was the way it goes. Right. You know, not, not some... Uh, fictitious version of it it's the stuff and to this day that's how i like to do it even when i'm playing in a crummy band you know jamming on the pavilion at jenkinson's down here or right and you know you do it the best you can just and the, the rock and roll hall of fame people at the end said came they came up to me they probably said it to everybody but they said vinny we I, I wish every band that played for us in the hall of fame in our shows was like you guys because we were all friends right yeah everybody getting along any, and there's no animosity there's no well i'm not playing with him because he wasn't this and oh man you know the other band of course some of them had some problems and uh well, we guys always had such a powerful and energy I'm together so happy things. about that yeah, yeah it, it seems like you, I mean, it, it seems like there's a deep friendship and, and uh, you know, th that's lasted for, you know, you know, th dozens of years. Long time. Of course. <laughs> I don't, I'm not good with math, so, but. Uh, you no, know, don't worry about it. I, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like back in uh, 1964 when I started playing these things. You know, all these guys were still around. Like I said, we didn't meet Bruce till 68, yeah. really. Yeah. I played in the band battle with him in 65. Is that right? Is Funny it, in the Starfires, but what? I really didn't meet him, you know. That was when he was with the Castiles, is that right? The Castiles, and uh, he wasn't really Bruce Springsteen yet. Right. You know? He was just some guitar player kid, you know. That's, yeah, I mean, it, and it's... he used to come watch Sonny, Sonny Ken, play, and he still does to this day. Is that... I just did a gig with Sonny this Saturday night. See, so we all kind of stay together. Yes, I, it's, and I mean, I think that's part of the, that maybe the tight-knit of the uh, music scene, you know, you, you guys all came up together, you played, with, everybody played in every different combination of bands, you know, it's that's like right. you kind of know everybody. And it's, yep. how, you know, how did um, Dave Sanchez, who played on the, the second record, how did, how, did, what, yeah. how, how did he come into the group? Well, see, we all used to play at the upstage, right? right. Mm -hmm. So David, now the upstage was on, you know, there was the black side of the tracks and the white side of the tracks. Right. Okay. So the upstage was more on the white side of the tracks. And David, being a, a black man, he came to the upstage to dance. He was a young kid. He was younger than us. But he came to dance. Then 
we found out that he could play guitar and mm-hmm. keyboards. And all of a sudden now he's jamming on the stage at the upstage. And when it came time to fill for, for Danny, David was asked to come and join the band. And he came in and just was phenomenal. I used to just love sitting there watching him play. He's yeah, he's just, just like a whirlwind. His go across. He's something that guy. I mean, just and the he still is to this day. Yeah, I mean the intro to New York City Serenade on the yep. second record. I mean, it's it's all him playing that piano, and it's just you know, it's oh yeah, he 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 had a guitar pick, and he'd hit them chords and strum the strings inside the piano. Oh, is that right? That's uh, the opening yeah. chords of that. Is that? Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> he'd make the chord and strum. The oh, strings. that's that's brilliant. I did not know. That. I know. was always wondered if that was an auto harp or if that was actually no, a string. No, that's that's how he did it. He grand piano. Wow. You know? Sounds and, like kind of the fun uh, of all it, you guys. He was just incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's and and I mean, he was in the band a short-lived period of time, and he went off to do solo music as well. And of yes. course, you know, playing with. Many legends like Sting and, and others, uh, Peter oh, Gabriel. Yeah. And, it, it, yeah. it, it's and it, it's phenomenal the amount of talent that is was in that group at that time. And of, David, uh, I'll tell you what. He, well, like the the opening act at the Hall, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame show this year was uh, Peter Gabriel. Wow! And there's David playing with Peter Gabriel because he does play yes. with Peter Gabriel. He plays with all these guys. You know, it, it's terrific. Yeah. You know, and then the, the you guys it's also. I mean, obviously, Bruce uh, is known for his relentless touring and and shows. And even then, on the second record, you guys played a phenomenal amount of shows. Just oh in God. that, and, and yeah. that we just kept going. I, it, and we, when we're when we're off the off the road for three days, you know, you think we go home? No, we went to the recording studio. You know, so it was always music. And it, Always, and it's Music. you mentioned it's like Steel Mill every day we rehearsed. I mean, you ha- you had to be just to listen to how tight the band was, and uh, and just a uh, night after night. And I was gonna say, I mean, it's like you didn't have much time for goofing off. It sounded like just from the stage performances. I mean, you and and we've talked briefly uh, about you know some people have mentioned these stories and passing and books and things of of you know the the the, the I don't know the, the 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 crazy periods back then, but you guys didn't get too crazy. I mean, you guys were always about the music, always about rehearsing, getting to the next show, and sounding great. Me and Clarence were probably, and Danny were probably the craziest ones in the band, you know, uh, as far as that would go. But our extent of craziness was okay. Who's driving? Okay, Clarence, you drive. He goes, okay, you hold the bottle, Lopez. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> now we drive 400 miles to the next gig. Gosh. Drinking, you know, Mogan David or, you know, my wild Irish Rose. That was like our favorite, my wild Irish Rose. <laughs> I, could, but, I could go on the road with you guys. We got. Put a, little in, <laughs> put a little inside yourselves, put a little inside the tank. Yes. Yeah, all right. No, no, it make... didn't work in the tank. The other stuff, <laughs> did you ever clear worked in the tank? No, that's, <laughs> that gets you to the show. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, and, and, but, but uh, Bruce and uh, I mean, I know Danny and, and, and had a, had a reputation too at that time of being a pretty wild, uh, wild, crazy guy. Uh, there's the, the 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 famous story of the organ, I think, falling on a police officer's head. Oh, uh, that's that's that was uh, at the Clearwater Festival in New Jersey. And uh, see, that's that's like a, a that's a story that most people don't really know. Is that oh, is that right? We had these speakers. They were big PA columns, but we cut them in half because Danny used these for the B three. He had two Leslies and four of these speakers. Wow! And we called them the Blas because these things were very heavy, and they had you had to have two handles on them. So the two guys could carry one speaker. Right. So that's how heavy they were. So when the concert that we were doing got uh, raided by the cops, the chief decides he's going to go up on stage and yell into the microphone. So when he's going up the back of the stage, he grabs one of the handles on the blahs <laughs> and pulled them over on himself. Oh, jeez. Wow. Danny didn't push any. Danny wasn't like that. Right. You know? But Danny got away, and boy, they blamed Danny for that. That's what it is, then. They just blamed yeah. him for it. 
you know, they blamed him for it. And, like, a lot of my friends got beat up, I mean, thoroughly beat up, because the Middletown cops came, they just got their new cop, you know, uh, truck, you know, right. with all the squat stuff in it, and they had to use it, so they used it on a bunch of hippies going to see a concert. Jeez. You know? That's the way they were. Oh yeah, hey, you <laughs> In know those it, days anyway. Right now, now it's a little bit different. Now they, now they've got tanks. <laughs> now they have tanks. <laughs> right. Tanks, but no tanks. That's what I. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I was gonna, uh, you know, you you you've performed uh, with the E Street Band in 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 gosh, in the last several years, you you've shown up here and there. I was actually at a concert, a, a Springsteen show, I believe, in two thousand and one, two thousand and two, uh, in in New Jersey, at the uh, at the great stadium, the giant stadium, and uh, yeah, it was two thousand three, I believe. Or was it was it three? I yep. see. Don't ask me about dates. Yep. I'm terrible. Well, uh, yeah, that was a rain show. It rained. It right? was the rain show, exactly. And uh, yes. I, 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 I had to leave the. Pro I was, I was escorted out by a lady friend of mine, and I got out to the parking lot, and someone told me that Vinny Mad Dog Lopez was on stage, and they would not let me back in. Uh, <laughs> and I'm so that sorry. Was, that was fun. I, I, how? Yeah, I, what like is that like? Days. What, what was that? What is that like to get up in front of? That many people at a, gi a giant stadium to play the drums again. I mean, do you, is it is is there a moment where you're like, wow, this is a lot of people, and then you and of course you you go back into professional mode and go play the drums. But did you have a yeah, moment no, to take I, those? I try and the people to tell you the truth. When you're up there on the on that stage and them lights are on you, you really can't even see the people. Right. They're far away, but you hear them. <laughs> You know they're there. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, me and Bruce always work out when I'm going to play, you know, what we're going to do, how it's going to work, you know. And uh, But I, I traditionally, I do get get a little nervous before shows. Not sure. Just that kind of, any show. And uh, then I go to the bathroom and I feel better. You're right. I go back up on the stage. <laughs> and uh, And you just play. That's what I do. Hey. And uh, I just play it as best as I can. I make Bruce smile. I'm happy. There it is. <laughs> if he's smiling, you're doing the right thing. That's <laughs> I am happy. <laughs> yes. Is 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 there much prep work? I mean, when you coordinate to do a show like that, uh, and uh, I mean, is there much? Do you, do you have time to rehearse a little with the well, group? Bruce comes and up to me usually. I'll see him just before the show. You know, he'll say, "Do you remember?" And I'll go, "Yeah." Of he course, goes, you really do. I say, yeah, <laughs> and we do it. <laughs> that's that's I, 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 incredible. I remember I've, all of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, you must. I mean, the you uh, you recently, I guess, you performed at the uh, the Hall of Fame, and uh, we, we did, and that's a first too, because Max and I played drums together. Th that's another thing I was going to ask. It's like seeing uh, Max. I mean, you weren't typically you weren't in the group when Steve Van Zant was in the group, and there's. A lot of you, you getting to play against. I mean, the the big version of the group, and uh, right. it must be a sensation to do these songs. How many songs did you play at the uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? We we actually did three songs. We did the the E Street Shuffle, of course. Yes, we did the River, and we did Kitty's Back. That is, and Kitty's Back, another another. Yep. I mean, the amount of epic. Yeah, the amount of classics. I mean, the, the Rosalita is another one. That's that's a huge. That's a huge song that, I mean, you've, you've, Rosalita, like Bruce, used that for years, closing out pro, uh, shows. And to this day, when I go sit in with somebody, they say, we're going to do Rosie, Vinny. I go, <laughs> okay, you've, let her rip. It's, it's, and I had to play Rosie. <laughs> I mean, you must be able to play that thing forwards and backwards. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, people, you know, like other drummers, gee, I just do me. I just right. play. I don't. I don't care. But other drummers, when I hear them do Rosalita, I say, "Well, why don't you do that lick there?" Right. Right. <laughs> you know, why don't you? In between here, there's all these licks. Why don't you do them? And they say, "Well, we do it. Keep it simple." Right. Keep you know? the time. I say, Jesus, I, now I got to go. Well, I, that is simple for me. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, you know, Stop come sucking, on. Guys. You know, I mean, <laughs> you don't even break a sweat. Right. You know, right. Rosalita. Well, guess what? I do. Yeah, <laughs> that's. I mean, you know, you can't. Like I'm 65 spirit. years old, and I can still play Rosie like it goes. Like so I, 
<laughs> that's, I mean, I've seen there's there's some great videos online of you with with the uh, the B Street Band doing some of these original songs like Kitty's Back, and it's and it's what is great is is the unique sound. I mean, I don't know if it's the sounds from the Asbury streets or what it is that is in Vinny Lopez when he's playing, but you still you still bring that back. And there's that. I mean, and of course, I mean, obviously Max Weinberg's a fen- phenomenal drummer, but there's Absolutely. his 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 feel and and the Vinny Lopez feel is is such a distinct difference and and songs like Kitty's Back Rosalita obviously you know things like that they really kind of define that well, sound see, before the Hall of Fame show and you know we get a sound check but before the hall before the show I'm in the dressing room and I'm there with Max and I'm talking to him and I'm and I'm saying you know Max god you play with these guys thousands of shows he said I said I'm not I'm going to stay behind. I'm going to keep you in mind. You're going to do this, you know, stuff. And, you know, every once in a while, I'll throw a lick in. And Van Zant came up and he goes, Vinny, Vinny, I just heard what you said. He says, when you want to do a lick, Vinny, you do your lick. <laughs> and Max, you speed up a little bit. Vinny, you slow down a little bit and meet on the beat. And that's what we did. That's it. That is it. <laughs> that is incredible. And, and, and it was so cool. You know, I mean, me and Max pulled it off. But we looked at each other like we always do. Yeah, yeah. as I, I, in in absolutely what a what a great uh, pleasure or honor that uh, that that must have been. I mean, just to be able to get on that stage and also to hear you know out of Bruce's own mouth uh, to to his fans and to everyone you know giving you the credit of of without without you. You know, the, the the E Street Band would have never have been, and it, it, that must be. Uh, I mean, gosh, after all these years, uh, it must have been such a a, 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 a unique and great uh, ex- experience and feeling. Well, he, he made he made me feel really, really special. Yeah, you know, Bruce did. Yeah, that's... And, uh, I hope someday I can repay that specialness to him. And I, I you know, I've I've I got a couple of questions. A couple of fans uh, wrote in. And, uh, and, and, and Petro uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. Petro wanted to know, Vinny, what was what was the very first drum set you ever owned? Well, uh, I, I told you about Buzzy Lubinsky. Yes. So when when because I didn't have any drums, I had a practice pad, and Buzzy would lend me his drums, which are beautiful old Ludwigs. So one day. Uh, I needed some drums because I was in Sunny in the Starfire. So my grandmother bought me a bass drum and a snare drum, a ride cymbal, and a hi-hat and a seat. And they were Leedy, uh, pre-Ludwig drums. They were they were Leedy. They weren't even Leedy Ludwig. These were Leedy's. Wow. And I had those drums for a long time, and then I bought another Leedy Tom Tom and a Leedy Floor Tom eventually going through. But my grandmother bought them for me. And um, my Uncle Joe, a year later, come up to me and he says, you know, you're a drummer, huh? I said, yeah. He goes, drummers can do four things at once. If you can do four things at once, I'll buy you a brand new drum set, my Uncle Joe says. And I said, well, Uncle Joe, get the checkbook out because I can do five because I sing too. Wow. Wow. (laughs) And he bought me a brand new set of Ludwig. Wow. That's great. What a nice guy. That's a great story. You know, but I I do I sing to this day. I'm okay. lead singer in the bands I play with. Yeah, I mean, and, and 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 you know, throughout the uh, the steel mill uh, and, and all the bands that you that you've played in, the, the vocals are always a very uh, you know everybody sings in these groups and yes. the harmonies. Yeah. We were playing. Uh, He's guilty earlier uh, on the program, <laughs> and the harmonies yeah. on that are great. They're fantastic. The judge song. Oh yes. <laughs> It, 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 you know, I want to. I want to ask you. There's so many of these recordings from the, the, the like we were saying, the Matrix. Those live yep. recordings, of course, the stuff that Bruce did uh, with with you on drums and some of the solo stuff from the the first of two records. Have you ever spoke to Bruce about uh, that stuff ever getting uh, released? Um, uh, we're, we're something in the back of his head is working on that now. Is that it's nothing? Nothing in concrete, right? But it's definitely you know, a, a consideration on his part. Yeah, he, because he told me years ago. I said, "Hey, Bruce, you know, I said you're really famous now. Let's why don't we make it do a steel mill tour? Just six months, you know, just do steel mill." He goes, "I don't go backwards." Oof, you know. 
I said, okay, okay, no problem, no problem. But now I think his uh, people are looking back. He's, he's starting to, they're starting to make him go backwards a little bit. Well, nah, just to hear. Right. Because, I mean, there's, to hear it. There's, there's so many uh, great unreleased tracks. I mean, obviously, the tracks box set came out, and that had some great recordings, like The Fever and Thunder Crack yep. and uh, things of that nature. But there's still such a, uh, we, uh, you know, we, I played a snippet of the, uh, there's a great track that you do drums on uh, called The Evacuation of the West. Oh God, that's such a great song. Such you know a, I mean? a phenomenal song, and the the fills on that that you're doing are just like such a great feel. The first time I ever heard that track uh, was probably at least 25 years ago, and and I I I I got it in the mail. Someone sent it to me from Canada. I got it in the mail. I prepared myself some food. Uh, I believe it was Linguini. And I put the uh, track on. Evacuation of the West comes on. Your drums come in. I go take a bite of the food. And the food had no taste because the drums were so good on that track. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But that's the stuff. <laughs> that you know, that's, I, what I look, that's what I look to. That's, you know, you know and I, I, I wonder if the, the reason why that track was not released was because of the effect it had on me. I wonder what that would have done to a large population of people. Well, see, so you got to realize that, you know, we only had, well, we didn't have any money, but there was limited time in the studio. And, like, Thundercrack never really made it on the record because it was such an epic production. Right. You know, so certain songs had to be produced, and that wasn't happening. You know, so they got left on the shelf, you know, but like Thundercrack, Bruce called me and Danny in to come and finish it, do vocals, and Is, yeah, and then he eventually put it out, um, you know, and there's a lot of other songs like that, right? You know, but when when he needs me, he calls me, you know. You, you actually, uh, you actually, you guys recorded that, what, in 73, 74, and then they right, brought you back well, in, well. they brought you back in to record the vocals, years yes. later. Years later. Wow. And, and how many tracks did you guys end up uh, recording when you did that? Just the one. Just the one. Just Thundercrack. <laughs> that, yep. what, that, that must have been a crazy phone call. You just get a phone call. We need you to finish a track that you started yeah. on 25 years earlier. But it's nice, you know. You go have dinner with him. Oh, you know, yeah. And, you know, and you get to meet his peacocks, you know. Right. So it's all cool. <laughs> that is cool. I I tell you what, you know, what, what the, one last question. This comes from our, uh, our producer, Jason Dove. He wanted to ask you, uh, Vinny, do you still snort beer through your left ear? No, I don't do that anymore because it's too messy. I, I just drink it the regular way now. There it is. You know? That's, I, we, we, now, now when I'm driving, I can't do that anymore. I got to keep my headphones in my ear. Right. You know, and stay so and snorting beer through my left ear is not an option anymore. And stay and on the road. Dawn don't like it. It gets on her too. I bet. I like that. Keeping it clean. Oh my gosh, Vinny! I, I I tell you what. I you know what? I, I really want to. I want to thank you so much for uh, taking the time out to uh, come on the program and 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 talking with us. I, I'm I'm so thrilled to have. Uh, you know, had you on, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you uh, were acknowledged uh, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a real honest pleasure and honor to have you on the program today. Well, Eddie, I got to tell you, it's my pleasure. And Rad's there too, right? Oh, yeah, Rush. Rush is actually, he's, he, just, he just stepped away from the mic. Here he comes. Okay, well, you just... You he just can, he can hear you I loud and clear, that. though. There he is. There's Raj. Yeah, tell him I said thanks to him, too. Oh, yeah. And you definitely. guys are, hey, you got a great show, I think, right? Oh, oh, baby, we got a fantastic show, and you just made it a lot better, too. I know. Well, are you it? out in the mission out there? We are. We are deep in the mission at the corner of 21st and Florida in the mission there of San Francisco. Go. Get some Everclear in your uh And your gas engine. tank and come yeah. on down. Come on down. <laughs> I want to come down one of these days. When I'm out there, you're going to get a call. Oh, awesome. I, you know what? If, if you're out here, we'd love to have you back on the program. That'd be fantastic. You know, I'm yours if I'm there. Oh, I love it. Vinny, Vinny Lopez, I, I, again, quite an honor. Thank you so much for taking the time out today. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. My pleasure. You got it, baby. Uh, Thank you, Vinny. Right. Take care. See we'll, see you, we'll see you soon. All right. All right. See you later. Toodle -low. Toodle -low. That was amazing. Exceptional human being. Mad Dog Vinny Lopez from the E Street Band.